Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to cover a quick review of the Android app AirDroid. And this is AirDroid. When you first launch the app, this is the screen you will see. Down at the bottom, I put a red box around some of the things we need to take a look at first. Now you'll notice device, apps, and file icons. The apps and files are managers in a sense, allowing you to see a list of all the apps and a file manager to manipulate files in your device. The device icon will allow you to see things as such as storage capacities and whatnot. There's also a built-in task manager that you can manipulate some of the settings behind the scenes in AirDroid. And you can see some information about the app if you choose that last icon. Should you need help with AirDroid, there is a built-in help file in the app. The help file does a really good job in breaking down some very basic information and terminology for those who may not be used to networking or wireless networking type utilities. However, if you've played around with Android, if you've played around with some wireless networking things, or if you're just a geek in general, you'll probably already know how to do most of this. So in that case, you may not necessarily need to use that help file. So go ahead and click back. On the AirDroid home screen, simply tap the blue start button. By tapping the blue start button, that will open the connection with your wireless access point. So on the next screen, you'll see a label at the top that says Wi-Fi and have a colon beside it. Beside that will be the name of your wireless access point. Now just for security purposes, mine's blurred out here, but it'll be the name of the access point that your phone is connected to. You need to make sure it's the same one that your computer is connected on as well. Make sure you're not on two different networks. The next label down will inform you to enter that IP address into your web browser. That's the entire IP address. It's 192.something.something.something colon 8888. Once you've done so, there's a little screenshot of what you'll see in the web browser. Enter that password into the login box on your web browser. That password is dynamic, so it will change every time you launch AirDroid for security purposes. There is an option that you can change that in the settings, but I prefer the dynamic side of it. So now we're using a computer connected to the same wireless network as our phone. I have full screen in my web browser so I get a better experience. In Chrome and Firefox, press F11 to full screen your browser. So once you log in, this is the interface that you're greeted with. You'll notice at the top center, there's a search bar. If you enter the name of an app that you'd like to find and click the search button, it will launch you over to the Android market. Okay, now we're back into the web interface for AirDroid. We'll check out the information box in the upper right-hand corner. You'll notice that there is an image of an Android phone. Click Details. You'll notice that that Android phone picture does not match what you're actually using. According to this, in the future, they're hoping that that will. We'll cover these icons here in just a moment. At the bottom of this box, we'll see there's a couple meters that kind of illustrate how our storage is being used on our phone, which is kind of neat. Now. We can select one of these icons and work with what's under that group. So let's click on apps. We can get in here and we can actually work with the apps. We'll cover that more in a moment uh, because we'll access it a different way. But let's go ahead and check out the dock on the left hand side. You'll notice the first button is for messages. If you click on that, you can actually send a text message from your phone through your web browser. Keep in mind this does not send through the web from your computer, but it does send from your phone. You're only controlling it from your web browser. You can click on contacts and you can add edit contacts from there. If you have a lot of clutter in this screen, you can click show desktop and it'll clear that up. If you click on the log out button and click OK, it'll take you back to the AirDroid login screen. Keep in mind that if you did not close the AirDroid app on your phone or your tablet, then you can still use the same password. But if you did close that app, a new password will be regenerated and you can use that to log in. The last icon in this dock looks like a little green paper airplane. If you left click on that, we have some options. We can add the site to favorites. We can lock the device. You can also like the AirDroid developers on Twitter and Facebook and a few other credit type things. If we click on messages, you can actually interact with your text message log and your list of text messages on your phone. Click on ringtones. We can see every ringtone that's on our phone. We can also set the ringtones for the ringtone itself for the notification and the alarm. Click on contacts will of course give you a list of your contacts. If you select apps there's some neat things under here that you can do. Uh, you can sort out your apps by user installed, system apps, 
or recommendations, which is kind of cool. That AirDroid actually recommends certain apps for you. You can install the apps if you have the APKs on your desktop. You can drag them into the file manager and install them. Uh, one thing I do like, you can do this with other things as well, such as photos and music. You can select an item and you can either export it or you can even uninstall the apps. And the pictures and music, you can delete them, delete those files as well. Uh, so we can click on files and we basically get a file manager. Here we can add files from our desktop computer to our phone. We can edit, delete, copy, paste. Everything you can do in a standard file manager you can do there. You can access your call log and get a list of all the phone calls you've made. You can launch the market. Now if you accidentally launch the market from AirDroid, it just simply opens it in a new tab so you can always come back to AirDroid. If you click on clipboard, you can see the contents of your phone's clipboard. So if you've been copying and pasting or cut and pasting text or numbers on your phone, you can access that there. You can access your camera roll and see all the camera files, your pictures, videos, things of that nature. If you had any music on this device, we could see that here. We could interact with it. We could move it around. We could rename it. Or we could import or export as well. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll notice there's several little meters here. We have one for our Wi-Fi internet connection. We also have one next to it for the data signal on your phone. And we also have a little battery meter. Of course, the whole concept behind AirDroid is to be able to manage your phone, manage the files and the things on your phone without having to actually physically connect your phone to your computer. Since your phone has Wi-Fi access to it, or most Android phones do, and it gives you the ability to do all that without actually ever having to plug it up to a USB cable, which is pretty neat because since I've been using AirDroid, I've had less reason to actually connect my phone to my computer directly. Uh, mostly what I would use AirDroid for is backing up my photos because I do take a lot of photos on my phone. So let's cover that right quick. And one of the really cool features that you can do is you can jump in there and you can export all those files to your computer. Now here I just simply went to my wallpapers folder and these are a bunch of wallpapers that I've downloaded. You can select them individually or you can select all. If you mouse over you can delete them, you can export them, things of that nature. I did select all and clicked export. Now I have a nice zip file on my desktop computer, in my downloads folder, that contains all these images so I can back those up. You can do the same thing with your music, you can do your photos, you can do your apps, you can also import and export your apps. Uh, we'll go ahead and quickly cover moving files from your computer back towards your phone as well. So let's launch the files icon that will open up a file manager for us. To add a file we simply need to click on the import button. That will launch the Import Files dialog box. From there, click the Select Files button. And this will, of course, open up this little file manager from your Windows computer. I've navigated to a directory that I have some files stored from an old Evo 4G that we had. So let's just move a song over. Simply select the file, and it puts it there. From this screen, if you decide you didn't want that file, you can click the Delete link. You can delete it, or we can close it, we can come back out and find that file. And if we scroll down, there's our file. Now you could launch into one of these directories and choose the import there, and it would import that file straight into the directory. Otherwise, you can drag and drop your file into each folder, just as you would under Windows Explorer, or you can use the buttons across the top. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this file because I don't really need it on my phone. And that's pretty much how you move files to and from your phone using AirDroid's web interface. Like I said earlier, it's just about completely eliminated the purpose for me to have to connect my phone to my computer using the USB cable. You can find AirDroid in the market, in the Android market. It is a free install. I believe maybe it's still in beta. I haven't looked at the actual market entry for it for a while. Uh, but do a favor, swing by, support these guys, and hopefully with the more support they get, the more features they'll build into it later down the road. So, once again, thanks for watching. Be sure you favorite our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can also find our website at techiesmarts.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and even like our Facebook page. You can find the links for those in the video description below, on our blog if you're watching this on the blog, or in the credits at the end of the video. So thanks for watching and have a great day.